great commentary on Amos Yogi's of all time, and definitely the greatest maple with us uh, alive today. We will speak about uh, how to use experimental mathematics to find exciting things about the Dyson crank and crank and stuff like that. All right. Okay. Um, thank you, Doran, and thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to speak. Um, I'm a bit afraid that you may not be able to follow everything that I do, but I, what I want you to get out of the talk is just the idea of um, how I use the computer to discover certain things and to prove them. Um, so I was just going to go over some notation and some stuff about partitions first. And I'll write that on the board. So basically, I remind you that um, a partition of n is a uh, non increasing uh, sequence of positive images. sum is n. And um, we let p of n equal the number of uh, partitions of n. Okay, so as a small table, um, okay, there's only one partition of one, two partitions of two, three partitions of three, congruences due to Ramanujan. Oh! Bad boy! What? Cross out. Cross out. Q less than one. I don't know if Andrew's done it. Andrew's is 75 years old almost. So you are that? 55 years old. We won't worry about conditions. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Convergence has no place in this seminar. This is not right. Convergence is the center of all parties. The only convergent comes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so there's three famous congresses due to remind you. One mod five, one mod seven, and one mod um, eleven. So, I guess, does that board come down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. But the other one doesn't go up. Right. <laughs> Is it false for the other primes or just not known? Um, there are other congruence for other primes, but they're a lot more complicated. Those are the, the three simple congruences, the five, seven, and eleven. Um, so let me just tell you no, that. Not for all primes. There are few. There exist a few other. Well, other primes. it's known that there are infinitely many. Yeah, but not all the primes. Yeah, well, not except two and three. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, but there's no congruence known mod two and three of that type. In fact, I think someone's proved that mod two that you can't. Or, or much I'm not sure that they, you can't have something like that. Oh, but for any prime, there exists congruence. But for every prime, you're going to five, there is a congruence of that type. But it, 
Yeah, but then bigger problems is more complicated. So we're going to talk about the Dyson rank function today. So this is the largest part minus the number of parts. Okay. So if I look at the partitions of 4, if I go 4, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And I look at the rank of each one. So this is 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, uh, 1 minus 4 is minus 3. Um, and what you do is re you reduce these mod 5. So that's 3, 1, 0, 4, 2. Now you notice that each residue class is represented equally. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if you let capital M, M, sorry, R, P, N equal the number of partitions of N with rank congruent to R, mod t, then Dyson conjecture <coughs> that these four things are equal. So in this particular example, each one of these numbers is equal to 1. There's one partition of 4 with rank congruent to 0 and 5. There's one congruent to 1, 1, 5, etc. But in general, if you look at the partitions of 5n plus 4, then you can break them into 5 equal piles according to the residue of the rank mod 5. So that was conjectured by Dyson. And there's a similar analog for 7n plus 5 mod 7. Um, so these two things actually imply Ramanujan's congruences. So they're a combinatorial refinement of Ramanujan's congruences. And these two, these are the Dyson conjectures. So Dyson conjectured these when he was an undergraduate at Cambridge. So that was in 19... 40 something. Um, they were actually proved by Akinus Wooden and Dyer. In 1953. Okay, so if I get to it in my talk, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a new identity um, for the rank function. And basically, uh, we let capital N, M, N equal the number of partitions of N with rank M, then uh, there's a two variable generator function for this thing. And it one form of it looks like this. Okay, which tells me that I have to tell you some Q notation. <laughs> and I have. So, I, this is the background I have to give you before I can start my talk. <laughs> <laughs> the background may be more important than the talk. Exactly, the background might be more interesting <laughs> and more important than the talk. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, actually, at least, Mark, the same. So, Q notation. Okay, so A 
sub n, which is also written as a uh, semicolon q sub n, uh, is defined to be equal to 1 minus a, 1 minus a q up to 1 minus a q to the n minus 1. So let's just call it q factorial. Right, Dora? Yeah. Right. right. And if it's understood about, if the q is understood, then we can leave it out and put it here. Leave it out. Yeah. Um, we also let n go to infinity and a sub infinity, a q sub infinity is just a limit as n goes to infinity of a q sub infinity. In whatever sense. In the sense of all parts, yes. In the sense of all parts. In any sense, it makes sense. <laughs> all right, so that's the, um, I think that's the key. So that's what this, these two things down here mean. They're just examples of this. So this is a product of n terms here and here. Okay. So, okay, so now I should go on with my talk. Okay, that's the background. All right. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was the Andrews SPT function. I forgot to put the word Andrews there because the last time I gave this talk, Andrews was in the audience and I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> so what you do is you look at the you look at the partitions of N and you count up the smallest the number of smallest parts in all the partitions of N. So here are the partitions of four, and I've just put a line over the smallest parts. Here are the smallest parts are one. 1, 2, 1, and 4. So altogether there's 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 smallest parts in the partitions of 4. So SPT of 4 is 10. SPT stands for smallest part. SPT. Okay, if you search SPT on the archive, there's all, I think there's something in astronomy that's also called the SPT, but that's got nothing to do with it. So this is basically um, the, so what I'm writing down here is the generating function. So this is not hard to see. If I let n be the smallest part, then this takes care of uh, the smallest part. So if I've just got one n, I count it with a one. If I've got two smallest parts, I count it with a two. I've got three, I've got three. And this part here basically counts the parts that are bigger than the smallest part. Um, this part sums nicely, and um, we have that series here. Okay. So I've got this maple package on my website called QSeries. And I've just loaded it into Maple. And this is my, uh, in my package, this is what I would call AQ prod AQN. AQ for the A and the Q, prod because it's a product, and N because of very in terms. Okay, so it's just, you've got to think of a function name that's easy. To remember. Okay, so here is the first 20 terms of the generating function, just using uh, what we just did there. So what you should. Do... Oh, okay, okay. Something else. So. Oh, I forgot. The next thing is SPT rank and crank moment. So have you ever had a rank moment? Um, <laughs> Or even a crank number. <laughs> so, as you've seen before, this um, is a big N counts the number of partitions of N with rank N. There's something else called the crank, which I wish I had time to explain, but uh, it's like the rank. The rank explains the congruence as mod 5 and 7. The crank also does mod 5, 7, and 11 of the remaining congruence. 
that's another talk in itself. So and then he does interject. That's a uh, Frank uh, is famous for introducing the crank uh, in an analog of the rank of Tyson, solving a 50-year-old comment or comment. So one way to think of these coefficients as being this is the generating function here is an infinite product on the top and two infinite products on the bottom. And I've mentioned this one here before. So what are the moments? Um, this is what's called the case crank moment, and this is the case rank moment. So Dyson proved that the second crank moment was actually n times the number of repetitions of n, and he has a combinatorial proof of that. And what Andrews basically found was that the SPT function is the difference between the second crank moment and the second rank moment. Um, and we have efficient ways of working out these rank um, generating functions, or uh, moment generating functions. So that gives another way of calculating it. So here, I have another two packages that I, I call rank and crank. Mm -hmm. And here I've defined the second crank moment, the second rank moment, and then redefine SPT in terms of using Andrew's identity. And there's the first 10 coefficients, and that should coincide with what was before. So what you should do is, whenever you come up with a new sequence, you should check whether you think it's new. So you highlight it, and you paste it into Sloan's page. So you, that's, you go to that URL, right? You paste in your sequence, and then <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff about the SPT function. So, um, here's Andrew's original paper on the SPT function. Um, here I've got a link to a table of the first 10,000 values. Um, and there's some other papers. That the, so I have a paper with Andrew's and Wingang on this as well. Uh, Ken Ono and Amanda Folsom have a paper on this. And, uh, so it just keeps going. So if I ever want to search for a paper on the SPT, I want to just paste the first 10 terms into Swain's thing, and I've got easy access to the reference. So here's a table of some SPT values. OK, so I have another function in my package called findcom. So if you went to my class, Doran's class this afternoon, you all know I looked at this. So what this does is it um, looks at the generating function, the first 500 terms, and it looks for linear congruences of the Ramanujan type. And when you do that, you come back with those three things. And basically, those are the three congruences that Andrews found. So George Andrews discovered, these, discovered and proved these three congruences for the SPT function. They are exactly the same as the Ramanujan petition congruences, except this one is an 11, it's a 13. And that 13 has been changed to an 11. Okay. Otherwise, it's the same. So it's kind of a big surprise that this looks like the, the petition function, but it's a big surprise is there's one mod 13 for the SPT function. There is actually no easy proof of this. There's no combinatorial proof, I would say. Because there's no rank or crank or flank. There is a crank that ex there actually is a crank that explains these two. But it's open whether you can find something that explains that. Okay. So if you want to go a bit further. So the only proof for the thirteen is using cheating analysis? Yeah, you have to There's use no proof. No elementary <laughs> proof. No. So it's not proof at all. <laughs> well I have a proof that uses um, basic couple geometric functions. Oh that's okay. So it's element it's and so the elliptic yeah. functions. Elliptic <laughs> functions, <laughs> yeah. So no that's probably okay. <laughs> okay. If you don't have Q less than one. So, if you go further, uh, you'll find some congruences mod 2 
and mod 4. So just about everything is known about the SPT function mod 2. That's another talk. But um, I was surprised that uh, these are actually two congresses mod 4 that I don't think are unknown. And I, if I had to prove them, I could. But I think something more general is true. Um, OK, so I'm going to skip this part. Sorry. Okay, so um, the next thing I want to talk about is a new identity for the SPT function. And I should tell you what I'm doing here. Um, this ADA, this ADA Q, one Q uh, 500 is basically the product n equals 1 to a Q. 1 minus q to the n, but it's it's just the first 500 terms of the series. So I'm taking I'm taking the third power of this function and multiplying it by the generating function for the SPT function on the computer. I had no good reason to do this, and this is what you get. Now, this is miraculous. Why? One thing that's, there's something that stares at you right in the face, right? You look at these coefficients. So, you see a bunch of squares. Well, they're not all squares. There's, that one is make, making. Mm, so, if I truncated it small, it would be more impressive, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you would agree there is something definitely going on. So, um, eventually I came up with this conjecture, which is now a theorem. Which is this. Okay, so this is the third power of Q infinity, which is that product, Q times the generating function of SPT, is equal to this. I've got, I've got to truncate it at the end. Um, and you see the squares there, right? This chi 4 is a Dirichlet character in mod 4. This is a Dirichlet character in mod 12. I won't write down exactly what it is. So I found this empirically. What I did was, I actually saw these things occurring in the exponent, and then I solved, and I thought, well, it's a square, and I've got two variables. I'll just look for whatever quadratic it is, and with enough data, you find that's what it is. And then you look for a pattern in the, in the, in the, um, the negative one part the sign. So eventually you get this. So how can you explain 35? Well, it's because it's probably the sum of two squares. Oh, or okay. what's 35? Yeah. Uh, 36 minus 1. Yeah, 36 minus 1. Yeah, good. good. So yeah, it's, um, <laughs> because you've got plus, yeah. pluses and minuses. Uh, yeah. So, if you look at, you see a minus 1 over 12 here? That's the right thing to look at, the minus 1 over 12. So, I, what I've done here is I've calculated minus 1 over 12 for mod different primes. So, for example, uh, for this one here, I've got 2. So, what I do here is, so what does this function do? It looks for, this is SPT3 is. This, this whole thing here, or this thing here, if you like. Um, this picks out the terms when the exponent is, con is 5n plus 2. And when you do that, something amazing happens. You see, you see a factor of 25 in here, right? And you see um, these powers are multiples of 5. Okay, if you do the same thing for 7, you'll get a 49 factoring out. But it doesn't work for 11. 
And it doesn't work for 13. It works for 17 and 19. And a similar thing happens for the Q infinity squared. But uh, let me tell you what's going on here. So, uh, so basically, I take that generating function again, and I change, I change Q to Q to the 12, and I add a 1. Um, so I rewrite the generating function like that. And the corollary is, if I let alpha of n be the coefficient, then if I look at primes primary to 5 and 7 mod 12, um, I get this behavior because of this form up here. When I, when I want to know when this is divisible by L, uh, it's a trivial solution when that's congruent to in uh, both of these are congruent to 0 and 1L, which brings, and then when you put it in here, you get the L squared out. So that's the behavior. So I, I actually noticed this behavior before I discovered the formula. This was in my NSF proposal, my last submitted NSF proposal back in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, it was rejected. Good damn. Shame on you. So, anyway. But now I understand why this is true. This is kind of amazing because the SPT function is not, the generating function is not a modular form. It's what's called uh, the holomorphic part of a weak harmonic mass form. Um, but it has this kind of modular behavior. Uh, it's very that part anyway. Okay, so I mentioned the SPT crack before. Um, this is the generating function for the SPT crank, believe it or not. Um, so that's all I'll say about it. Except uh, we know what we. If you look at this, you can sort of work out what this is counting. But the trouble is, there's something in the numerator here, so there's sort of a positive and a negative weight. The surprise is that all these coefficients are non-negative, and we have a proof of this, but even though we can prove these things are non-negative, we don't know exactly what they're counting. So that's an open problem. But this function explains the SPT congruences mod 5 and 7, but it doesn't explain the 13 one. Well, the interesting thing is, well, the, the thing that, why this is related to the SPT function is, is because if you put z equal to 1, if you put z equal to 1, um, the stuff in the numerator cancels the stuff in the denominator, and you get that. And if you rewrite that, that's a generating function for SPT. So when you put z equal to 1, you get the SPT function back. So this SPT crank function is actually a refinement of the SPT function. Okay. So. so what I so remember when I took the SPT generating function, I multiplied by Q infinity cubed, that thing there. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the SPT crank generating function. And instead of multiplying by Q infinity cubed, I'm multiplying this by this thing called the triple product. Um, and basically, what the triple product is, is this. It's equal to Z infinity, Z inverse Q infinity, um, Infinity. And this is basically a Jacobi theta function. So if you take, if you factor out the first term in here and you put z equal to 1, you'll get q infinity, q infinity, q infinity, you'll get q infinity cubed. Okay. So, so if I know, I just thought, well, okay, I'll just try. Actually, I tried multiplying this by Q infinity cubed, and it was a mess. So the next thing I tried was multiplying by this. And then when you look at the series expansion of that, you get this. Now you might say, that doesn't look good. But if you think about it, there's something really going on here. right? In fact, if I pick out the coefficient of z to the 0, uh, OK, I guess I've written 
done the theorem. So here's the theorem. 